I wanted to take a few minutes today to talk about something that I am passionate about that I don't talk about a lot, which is actually Green Lantern. And today's video is really about the mishandling and the almost blatant hatred of the Green Lantern, and I guess I should say Lantern Core brand at DC. You're gonna notice my voice is still a little iffy. Uh, I'm still a little bit sick, but I should be better soon. Regardless, if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm interested to hear. Uh, tell me if there's other characters you want me to talk about or any other Green Lantern stuff, because I do love these characters. Uh, it's just, I feel like DC and WB, you know, the people who hold the rights to them, don't. Also, really quick, question of the day. This helps drive engagement and let me get to know you and uh, actually hear your hear your opinion. Who is your favorite Green Lantern? Or if you don't want to answer that, what's your favorite Lantern core? A lot of people, it's not actually the green one, so I want to hear what you think. My favorite GL is probably, it's either Kyle or John. I'm, I'm pretty much tied on those two. But I wanted to take a look at a few of the ways that DC and WB have just really neglected or mistreated Green Lantern in the last couple of decades. I think the biggest one, by the way, is the Green Lantern movie. Now, my point with this video is not to do like an in-depth review on the Green Lantern movie. Here's what it did wrong and right. You know, overall, I think the movie has a lot of problems. I do think that there is fun to be had in it that I think a lot of people unfortunately overlook. And I do think that it did have some creative and really neat stuff around and in it. For example, one of the things I'm showing on the screen is actually going to be from the Green Lantern movie game. It's uh, Rise of the Manhunters. And that actually is a tie-in game to the Ryan Reynolds movie that was created in the early 2000s. Now, why am I talking about that movie? Well, first off, the game I actually think is kind of fun. It's a little God of War-like, it's underrated, it's something I'd like to talk about in the future. But overall, nobody really talked about it because of the stigma surrounding the movie. Now, like I said, the movie does have some creative concepts in it, some things that are really actually kind of fun. For example, I do think the constructs they make in the movie are actually imaginative. You know, they actually do use their imagination when it involves the ring. There was an over-reliance on CGI when it came to costume design and a lot of stuff in the movie. I understand that. And also they tried to, you know, pack too many things into this one little can of worms and it resulted in kind of a mess. Like Parallax is just not good in this movie, for example. I get it. But the problem is that WB and DC completely caved after this movie. This is something that they do over and over again. This is not just a Green Lantern problem. They also did it with the Zack Snyder universe when it came to criticism. Uh, they just kind of like backed off, you shoot him out, brought in Joss Whedon, and then things got worse with that version of Justice League. And then they really didn't have any direction for their universe. So WB is known for doing this when they get criticism. They just don't know what to do and they panic. But the Green Lantern movie was something that they took to heart so much, the, I would say, criticism around it, that they just didn't do anything with this character in live action for years. Now you might say, well, Jay, why does this matter? You know, like, Jay, you read comics, like he was in the comics. Like there was, you know, Hal in the comics, there was Kyle in the comics, there was Jon Stewart in the comics. Like, yes, I get the comics still used them, but that was also a bit of a problem, which we will get to. The thing though is that you kind of need this live action side if you're going to be pushing your characters because it's something that will get more eyes on the characters. Unfortunately, as comic books have gotten more expensive, one of the things that actually has pushed some younger readers into the hobby is movies, is video games, is seeing those characters in more accessible mass media. And Green Lantern has been handled very poorly in that mass media. For example, after the entire a kerfuffle around his movie, they just straight up vetoed him from showing up in Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now, he was actually originally going to be played by Wayne T. Carr, who actually showed an image of himself as the Jon Stewart Green Lantern, which I thought was pretty fun. And there is a small Green Lantern scene in Zack Snyder's version of Justice League, the Snyder Cut, that shows a previous Green Lantern going up against Darkseid. But overall, they were actually going to put this this character into the movie. Like they were going to set up a Green Lantern. They were gonna set up Jon Stewart going forward in live action. But unfortunately, even though he, you know, was actually going to be there, 
they just got rid of it. It was actually cut from the movie because basically HBO Max had announced it was developing its own Green Lantern series and it was going to be focused around the Green Lantern Corps and they were gonna have Guy Gardner, Jessica Cruz, Simon Baz, and basically they were just going a different direction. So they pretty much said no to Snyder putting that in. Now, no matter how you feel about Snyder, like maybe you are ecstatic that the Snyderverse isn't a thing anymore. Uh, maybe you're like me where you tried to be invested in the DCEU 50 times and you're just kind of disappointed that it fizzled out. Or maybe you're somewhere in the middle or just your hardcore Snyder fan, whatever you are, it's still disappointing that they were going to get Jon Stewart, the childhood Green Lantern that a lot of people grew up with from things like the DC animated universe with shows like Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, he was going to show up on screen live action years ago and we didn't get to see it because WB just basically put a, a, a big old new no sign up in front of the creative abilities of the, of the creator in that case and just said, nope, you're gone. And it's really unfortunate because it did go on to affect other things as well, this stigma around Green Lantern. First off, because he hasn't gotten a lot of attention in anything mainstream, he kind of has been relegated a little bit to a joke by some people, even though he's such a strong and cool character. And when I say he, some people are gonna say, Jay doesn't know what he's talking about with Green Lantern, there's a hundred of them. Yes, I understand that. For that point, I was focusing on Jon Stewart, but it's true of like any person holding the Green Lantern mantle. Like a lot of people don't see him as this interesting character anymore outside of hardcore comic book readers because he's not getting attention in movies. One other thing I wanted to add into the middle of this video is it's going to be a shameless plug as well. I have a Fortnite code, which is DJAY123. If you wanna help support this channel, cause I don't really uh, make much money on here, obviously not many people actually see my channel. Uh, that kind of stuff goes to help my family a lot. But one of the reasons I wanted to bring up Fortnite is actually because it's probably one of the biggest draws to characters and to getting people into characters I've seen in years. Millions of people play the game. So when you have a brand collaboration, you put your character in there, it actually does draw new eyes to the character. You know who was actually overlooked when they were putting in tons of Batman characters? They were putting in other Justice League members like Superman, Wonder Woman, you know, Joker showed up obviously, Harley Quinn was in, Fortnite as a skin, you know who was overlooked? Green Lantern, all of them. All of the Green Lanterns were, as of recording this, overlooked. They just didn't do anything with them. There's this weird stigma around the Lantern mythos. I really think ever since the movie came out, ever since that happened, they've just completely shied away from the brand and they don't get new eyes and new viewers and new audience members interested in GL or any of the Lantern cores. They just kind of leave it to the hardcore comics fans and that's it. And I think it's really disappointing. He's not even getting attention in animation. Like for example, he got what? In the last like handful of years, Green Lantern Beware My Power. Okay, let's take a brief look at that movie. In the old DCAU, Green Lantern was basically Jon Stewart. There were other ones that showed up, but that was the main one that we got to see. He was awesome, he was three-dimensional. A lot of kids grew up with this version of the character. A lot of people love him. And you know what? He went on to be such a mainstay in the comics following the DCAU because of the amazing characterization that they put into that character. He had romances, he had strife, he had you know difficulties with his own uh, community that he was from. He was very three-dimensional. But you get to something like Green Lantern Beware My Power, and it was very much a 2D character of what Green Lantern should be. They shoved plot points and origin story points from characters like Kyle Rayner, another Green Lantern, who is tied with John, I believe, as my favorite, uh, but they pushed them onto John. Two characters with the same moniker, right? Like, let's say I had Spider-Man and I had uh, Ben Riley, the Scarlet Spider, and I just basically put Ben Riley's story beats onto Peter Parker and I made a movie about it. No, that's a Ben Riley movie. But that's kind of what they did with Beware My Power was they took a bunch of crap from Kyle, shoved it onto John and said, here you go. They just kind of gave us a hodgepodge, uh, potluck, like hot dish or casserole version, I should say of Green Lantern, where they just jammed a bunch of characters together and said, here you go, take it. You get your Green Lantern movie. And it was panned because people didn't like it. They didn't like that he was overshadowed in his own movie. They didn't like that he had these story beats from other characters shoved onto his story. It was disingenuous, it wasn't done well, and it's, it's really unfortunate because it could have been something to get eyes back on Green Lantern, but they mishandled it yet again. 
I think one of the biggest things that a lot of people complain about with all these characters is Injustice, but I actually thought that Hal Jordan's Green Lantern in Injustice, while it was frustrating that, you know, he became a Yellow Lantern and joined Superman's regime, and you can get into that, they did redeem him at least, right? They went back and they made Green Lantern a symbol again of, of goodness in Injustice 2, and he was actually one of the characters who got redeemed. But unfortunately, even though they had that template right there for like a way to make Green Lantern actually, you know, like have some struggle and then bring him back to the light, bring him back to good. Well, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League came out and that was one of the biggest, you know, mainstream things recently that we've seen Green Lantern in. And what happened? Well, he was made evil and then you murder him and leave him in his underwear and you take his his ring. So this is one of the things that's probably the most disrespectful to me and i know well jay there's going to be a reveal later on in this not totally not dead game that he's actually just a clone like the rest of the justice league it's not a big deal he's just a clone but here's the thing even if this is not the real green lantern and not the real justice league in this game it is a game focused around killing versions of your childhood heroes in pretty ridiculous ways you put a bullet in Green Lantern's face. Now, what's interesting is the boss fight to get to him, I actually thought was pretty fun. It involved using Sinestro Core energy to actually, you know, break down the will of Green Lantern to be able to fight him with little mini yellow lanterns and stuff. I thought that was actually kind of cool. That was creative. But the problem is then you get to him and you put a bullet in his face, you leave him dead in his underwear, basically like you stripped him down, left him dead in a ditch almost. And then King Shark rips the lantern, the green lantern ring off of his finger, rips his finger basically off and takes it. And then he's just left there laying in his underwear. So it's one of those things where like, even if it does get revealed that he's fake, it's again, another version of green lantern just disrespected on screen. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking already, well, Jay, these are all, you know, mainstream, you know, big screen or small screen or video game versions of the character. But like, what about the comics? You know, the comics are where it really matters. And it's like, yes, I understand that. I get that the comics do matter. In fact, I have Green Lantern comics hanging on my wall. And actually, Jon Stewart recently had uh, his war journal run, which I thought was really cool. So there is stuff going on with Green Lantern in the comics, but unfortunately, they were really focusing on the Lantern core and all these different groups for a while. They were focusing on the Blue Lanterns. And, you know, we got to see the Star Sapphires and all kinds of stuff in the New 52 era. It felt like they were actually pushing the Green Lanterns back then and trying to create new characters. And with Rebirth, they were still getting into things like, you know, Jessica Cruz. They were doing more Green Lantern stuff. The problem is they started playing it really, really safe again in the comics. They moved away from a lot of the more unique storylines. For example, Kyle Rayner being the White Lantern. They moved away from it. They moved away from it more than once, but they moved away from it again, kind of approaching the DC event Doomsday Clock to power him down and kind of more synergize their brand into just making the Lanterns the Green Lanterns again. For a while, we were seeing the Red Lanterns and, and the stuff Atrocitus was doing. We were seeing, you know, Saint Walker with the Blue Lantern Corps. We were seeing all of this stuff going on that was very creative, but then DC decided, eh, let's scale that way the hell back and just go back to only a couple of Green Lanterns and not focus on much else that's going on for them. And it's really disappointing and unfortunate because the comics were the one place where Green Lantern, I think, was being handled pretty well where they were doing a lot of different storytelling and expansion around the different core uh, groups and actually getting into more lore. And then they decided to pretty much just get rid of it. So I don't know, overall, I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on this. I do think there's a lot of ways to actually save the Green Lantern group uh, or any of these cores pretty much and bring them back in things other than the comics. But even in the comics, I think they've severely scaled back and really only focus much on the Green Lanterns and sometimes the Sinestro core now. And I think it's, it's a shame. I think they could do a lot more with these characters. They're based around imagination. You know, what could someone create with these constructs? They're based around the idea of law and order, but like without a bunch of corruption. There's a lot of interesting storylines about the Guardians, you know, behind the Green Lanterns. There's interesting stories about the emotional spectrum. There's interesting stories about all of these characters. And yet a lot of them just go ignored because DC's like, uh-oh, one time we made a movie and it didn't do very good and we made some mistakes. 
we better not do anything with that guy. I do know that Green Lantern as a brand is kind of getting a relaunch in the new DC universe under James Gunn. I am hoping that that's something that's done well. Like for example, uh, Nathan Fillion was actually cast as Guy Gardner a while back. So I'm hoping that's something that will do a good job with bringing people back to caring about this character. But like, there's so much you could do. You could bring back the DCAU version. I know Kevin Conroy passed, but like a, a Green Lantern and Hawk Girl show, for example, who are romantically involved. That would be amazing. I'd love to see something like that with Jon Stewart. You could focus on Hal Jordan in that universe or Kyle or anybody. Like you could bring back that beloved universe and do a good job. You could make another video game that was actually done well instead of murdering them in one. You could actually go for it in a animated movie, but like none of this stuff is stuff that they do. It's, it's unfortunate. And that's why I'm interested to hear your thoughts down below. So if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content. If you want to help support this channel, there are a couple ways. I have other channels like Degenerate Plays where I play through games, kind of podcast style with my friends and my wife. We talk, we hang out, we have fun. I want to grow that channel. I always appreciate it. I have a channel where we talk a little bit more about anime. That's actually my wife's channel, Magical Jill. Uh, we've been talking about Dragon Ball and S Sailor Moon actually recently. We have our own store, CosmoBunny.shop. My wife mainly runs this. We actually take comic books and manga that have been damaged that local stores aren't able to sell. What we do is we cut some you know, paper and things out of them. We actually make repurposed comic book resin coasters, keychains, and trays. And we have our own discount code for that, which is also DJAY123 for 10% off your first purchase, just like our Fortnite code. It's the same code. Uh, my wife also makes handmade jewelry over there, and we do our best to make all kinds of cool stuff, and we recycle anything we don't use. So it's a business that we use to recycle, make something cool for you, and we appreciate you very, very much. I, I hope you'll check those things out. Finally, if you want to you know, join a really cool community, maybe of like-minded individuals, we have a Discord. So that's in the description down below as well. Uh, my voice is usually better than this, but I've been very sick, so I appreciate your patience, and I hope you have a fantastic day. As always, everyone, stay shway.